Okay, so what we will be doing here is just doing a basic surface tension test. Okay, the unique properties of cubic zirconia compared to moissanite is that when we apply the, the gel pin, okay, this is very hard to do, but in real time, you guys will be able to uh, see that it beads up very quickly. Whereas in moissanite, when we apply the, the gel pin, you can see that it keeps that streak, okay, and it does not beat up compared to um, the, the cubic zirconia. Okay, so we can do this for this stone here. It's a little bit big and it's kind of jumping around the place, but um, we can uh, demonstrate that too. See, so it keeps that streak, whereas it beads up instantaneously and it still remains there. Okay, this is a cheap little dollar tree gel pin that anybody can use to But where did it come from? Meet Edward Goodrich Atchison, born in Pennsylvania in 1856. Edward was a bright student, but when his father died, he had to quit school and work to support the family. Yet he continued his education in the evenings, setting up electrical experiments. When he contacted Thomas Edison and tried to sell one of his battery designs, Edison hired him and sent him to Europe to install electrical systems. Eventually, Edward struck out on his own and tried to use electric heat to impregnate clay with carbon. What he ended up with was a lump peppered with small, shiny specks of a substance that he would later recognize as carborundum. Carborundum is silicon carbide, and though it can occur naturally, it is extremely rare. This is why Edward's discovery is so significant. By using his electric furnace to fuse clay and carbon, Edward managed to manufacture the second hardest substance known to man. Today, carborundum is used in dozens of industries. You can find it in ballistic vests, abrasives, disc brakes, and even as a coating for nuclear fuel. In 1926, the U.S. Patent Office named Carborundum as one of the 22 patents most responsible for the industrial age.